So now we'll talk about steady vortex flows, and these are flows that have circular streamlines. So down here I've sketched two circular streamlines. We'll consider R theta polar coordinates, and in that case u, the vector field, is a function of u r and u theta. And as you can already see here, the streamlines are circular around a certain origin, so there is no radial component to your velocity field, and the velocity field is simply a function of u theta, which does depend on how far from the origin you are, potentially. So in the first case that we're considering here, number one, we'll consider solid body rotation. And for solid body rotation, our flow field u theta is simply omega zero r. And omega zero is our angular velocity and it's a constant. Yeah? So we have a constant angular velocity. So if we plotted a profile of u, we would say, okay, it's zero at r equals zero, and then it increases linearly as you go out from the center of the vortex. So this line here is u theta is omega r. Now let's consider one element, one fluid element, a, b, c, d, and we'll think about how that deforms and changes. It has a center point P. So if your streamlines say are pointing counterclockwise, so your flow is counterclockwise around the origin, then after some time dt, your new element will be up here. So this is going to be a dash, b dash, c dash, d dash, and we have a point P dash in the middle. And so what you see is that every point A, B, C, D rotates around the origin at the same angular velocity omega zero. So the fluid element itself does not deform, it just rotates around P, around the center of the element, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise around P. Now, the vorticity of this flow is readily computed. Omega is the curl of u. And now you have to compute the curl of u in polar coordinates. And we can show that this is EZ, so the basis vac vector in the z direction. So again, the rotation axis is out of the page. And the vorticity is given by 1 over r d by dr r u theta minus 1 over r d by d theta u r. And this is actually a homework question too, to show that that's the curl in polar coordinates. See homework question 2. So there are no theta or R components to the vorticity, which is not surprising. And also one more simplification, u theta does not depend on theta, it just depends on r. So this component also goes to zero. So we'll find that omega is really just ez times 2 omega zero. We can, in component form, you would write it as 0, 0, 2, omega 0. Let's remember from last time that the vorticity is simply twice the fluid rotation rate. And all the fluid elements rotate, therefore, around P at rate omega 0, i.e., Fluid elements rotate around their center at the same rate as every particle rotates around the origin. Next, let's consider the, the strain rate tensor. And the strain rate tensor is given in polar coordinates by SRR, SR theta, SR theta, S theta theta. And if you look at 
u theta it's omega zero r you will find that the strain rate tensor is zero all the components are zero so there is no deformation and that's why this is a solid body, body rotation vortex to show that this is really zero you have to get the individual components here of ss and they are dur dr and up here it's a half r d by dr u theta over r plus a half 1 over r dur d theta and that's the same as the other diagonal of course and then we also have down here we have 1 over r du theta d theta plus u r over r finally let's consider the circulation of this flow around a streamline of radius r so in that case gamma as we know is the line integral of u dot ds and for the streamline of radius r we will have u at r is omega zero r and then ds will be r d theta and we will go from zero to two pi so that is simply omega zero r squared 2 pi. So the circulation in this case is simply 2 omega 0 times pi r squared, which is nothing else but the vorticity times the area of the loop that we consider here.